Choose the workspace type by selecting the 3D radio button. Select the bending rigid structure option. For default materials select C2530 from the drop down list of materials. Click finish to close the project settings dialog box. Select save as from the file menu. Enter the name concrete slab and save the file. Select mesh from the options menu. Select the grid mesh type and enter 1.5 for default element size. In the pilot right click on structure and select system management, create a subsystem. Type dome for the subsystem's name. You can also create a sub new subsystem by clicking F6. So click F6 and type side for the name of the second subsystem. Call the third subsystem raft and call the fourth subsystem foundations. From the generate menu select structure vault generator linear vault. Type in radius of 20 meters. The horizontal distance between the ends is 22 meters. The height is 3.1 meters. Type in x coordinate 11 and z coordinate 6. Type 10 for the number of linear elements forming the vault. Select the R200 by 300 cross section and material C2530. Click OK to apply settings and to close the window. Click front view and then zoom all. Then select the vault elements to the left of the Z axis and press the delete key. Enter a vertical linear element from the right hand end of the vault to Z equals zero. Draw the tank's raft element by starting from the base of the vertical element and then typing the coordinates 2, 5, 0. Next we will cut the vault using the raft as a reference. Draw a vertical line starting from the end of the raft and passing through the vault. Select the line. Select the trim or extend command from the CAD modifications toolbar. Click the vault to the right of the line. This will trim away the portion of the elements on the left side of the line. You can then select the remaining vault elements on the left side of the line and delete them. Select the minus one, minus one, one view from the predefined views toolbar. Select all the elements. Open the extrude dialog box from the CAD modifications toolbar. Select the rotation mode. Let the axis be 0, 0, 1 and enter an angle of 9 degrees. Type 10 for the number of planar elements. Choose C2530 for material. Enter a thickness of 200 millimeters. Click preview to see the settings effect and apply to create the extrusion. We can now delete the linear elements used to define the extrusion. Now select the raft elements. In the pilot, right click on one of the selected elements and select cut from the context menu. Select the raft subsystem, right click and select paste from the context menu. All the planar elements from the raft are now in the raft subsystem. Then select the side elements and add these to the side subsystem in the same way. Select the dome elements and add these to the dome subsystem. Switch back to the minus one minus one one view. Select the raft subsystem. Select create a planar element. Then create the planar element starting from the work plane origin, then clicking each extremity of the raft elements. Switch to the one minus one one view. Select the semicircular planar elements and deselect the Allow Deformation option from the CAD's Modifications toolbar. Keep a control key pressed, click an extremity of the planar element and drag it to the dome. Then move the copied element to the dome subsystem.
select dome system, select create a linear element command and specify a rectangular cross section of 250 by 350. Click the top corners of the first planar element from the tank side to draw a capping beam. Select the beam and click copy. Select the rotation copy mode. Enter 9 copies and an angle of 9. Click preview and then copy. Select the foundation system from the pilot. Switch to the minus one minus one one view. Select create a rigid planar support from the raft. To create the other supports, copy the first one nine times using copy by rotation. Now create the loading. In the pilot, right click on loading and select create several case families. Type 2 for live loads and then click create. The two loads will take account of earth pressure, represented by planar loads acting from outside of the tank's lateral sides and hydrostatic pressure, represented by planar loads acting from inside on the tank side and on the rafter. Select the live load case 1Q. Select create a planar load. Select load axis coordinate system. Enter minus 58 kilonewtons for FZ. For variation coefficient values, enter 1 for vertices 1 and 2 and 0.35 for vertex 3. Switch to the 1 minus 1 1 view. Draw the planar load representing the earth pressure on the first planar element from the tank side. Select the load, then copy it 9 times using copy by rotation mode on a 0, 0, 1 axis by a 9 degree angle. Select the live load case 2Q. Click create a planar load. Select local axis coordinate system. Enter 98 kilonewtons for FZ. For the variation coefficient values, enter 1 for vertices 1 and 2 and 1.35 for vertex 3. Draw the planar load representing the hydrostatic pressure on the first planar element from the tank side. Then copy it by rotation. After that, create a vertical load on the first element of the rafter. Make all the variation coefficients equal to 1. Give it an intensity of minus 98 kilonewtons. Copy by rotation again. In the pilot, right click combinations and select properties. Click add and combine load cases 1 and 2 both with coefficients of 1. From the main menu, select Analyze Create the Analysis Model, select Mesh and OK. Right click in the graphical window and deselect Display Supports. Display the rendering toolbar and click Ghost Display. Right click in the graphical display and deselect Hide the Mesh. Select the Raft Subsystem, then select Create a Line Command from the Analysis Assumptions toolbar. Draw the lines on the semicircular plane element from the raft snapping to the corners of its side. Press enter after drawing each line. Select create an arc by three points from the analysis assumptions toolbar. Define the arc by first selecting the center point. Then select the start and end point by snapping to the midpoint of the edges as shown. For number of sides type 10. Now repeat these steps for the semicircular planar element from the dome.
launch the mesh calculation again. Switch off ghost display and display the nodes. Knowing that our structure has a double symmetry, it can be modelled as a half of a semi-structure, as it has been done in our example. However, the rest of the structure must be modelled using appropriate DOF restraints. These restraints can be automatically applied to the nodes using the symmetry conditions. Choose the top view of the work plane. Select the nodes from the side of the model along the x-axis. From the main menu, select Generate Symmetry Conditions. Select the XZ plane, then select the nodes from the side of the model along the Y axis. Select Generate Symmetry Conditions and select the YZ plane. Then run the FE calculation. Display the displacement results for load case 1, earth pressure. Then for load case 2, hydrostatic pressure. Now select section cut from the generate menu and create a section cut through the side of the tank. Then select the section cut and click result cares on the FE analysis toolbar. This opens up the dialog box where you can choose to display any of the results on the section cut.